By American standards, Boston's an older city, and that goes for much of its public infrastructure to keep up with problems in the water and sewer system. A separate commission was formed in the late 1970s, but the Boston Water and Sewer Commission also depends on the cooperation of its customers. To explain is our guest from the commission, the communications coordinator, Stephen Maloney. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Stephen. Thanks, Chris, for inviting me. And the Boston Water and Sewer Commission onto your great program. Well, I want to ask you about a little of, of the history because uh, I remember those days in the late 1970s and there was a lot of concern that, that uh, the city needed a, a more effective way to fix things, maybe improve things. Uh, so talk a little bit about that. Sure, and I think that's probably one of the reasons Boston Water and Sewer was formed by an act of the legislature in 1977, it took it away from the city of Boston. I guess it's what you would call a quasi-public agency. But in that legislation, the commission is directed to have a capital improvement plan. And that plan is ongoing. It's very aggressive. It prioritizes the infrastructure improvements that we need. And I would say that the perception is that we're an older city, that our infrastructure is older. But actually, there's a lot of strong and enduring things about our infrastructure as far as it goes with water and sewer. Now, is that because uh, this was built better in the first place or because we've been taking better care of it the last few decades? I would say both. I would say that if you look back at the history of, especially the water side, that we've always had visionary leaders on water dating back centuries. I mean, Quabbin Reservoir, for instance, is a dedicated, pure, safe, reliable, uh, supply of water for the city that was built uh, going on to a century ago. Um, the pipe that were laid uh, back in the day were made of steel and iron, things that were built to last. Clearly these things have needed to be updated, maintenance has to be done, replacement has to be done, but I would say that the Boston Water and Sewer Commission with its capital improvement plan has if not kept pace, we've possibly even stayed ahead. Well, I, I don't think we have the wholesale problem with lead in the system that you have in cities like Flint, Michigan. But I guess there maybe are people in Boston who should be concerned about uh, what's going on with the pipelines in their own homes. Well, yes, and if they do have a lead service line that brings the water from the main into their homes, they should know about it by now. Uh, Boston Water and Sewer has had a very uh, comprehensive outreach program to those owners. We know where most of those lead service pipes are. Over the course of uh, past years and again this summer, we have sent letters out to those owners telling them about our lead replacement program. So I think that there aren't a lot of mysteries about lead in the, the residential uh, area now. I think most people have been informed. Uh, if people do have questions, they can certainly call Boston Water and Sewer. We have a lead hotline, 617-989-7888. I may answer and answer any questions folks will have about lead. We're talking with Stephen Maloney from the Boston Water and Sewer Commission. Uh, Stephen, uh, I guess there's another problem that we have, uh, especially getting into the fall with certain kinds of cooking, uh, and that's about what you pour down the drain. That's right, what we call fog, and that's not what comes off the harbor on a chilly morning. It's fats, oil, and grease. And as you mentioned, Chris, these are fats, oil, and grease that are a byproduct uh, generated by cooking. And of course, this is the time of year when families gather for festive meals. Fats, oil, and grease are a problem year round. But we chose at this time of the year when folks are getting together for holiday dinners to focus on the problem. And what we're telling people is, you know, this is just not a, a nuisance issue. I, I wish you'd, uh, I could say it was, but it's a, really a major problem. Fats, oil, and grease that go down our drains into your private sewer line or into the public sewer are a real cause for concern. They can cause blockages which lead to sanitary sewer overflows, not pleasant, not healthy, and potentially costly to homeowners. So what we recommend is that people can it, cool it, and toss it in the trash. And so part of our campaign is we offer to Bostonians, 
Boston Water and Sewer customers, these grease lids. And they do a number of things, Chris. First of all, when you put them on the can after you've poured your grease and fats and oil into it, it protects it from spillage. It's also a reminder. You put it in the fridge before you trash it. Oh, yeah, you know, that's what we have to do. We don't want to put it down the drain. And then on trash day, again, it's a reminder, let's toss it out. The idea is I think that people think that, you know, we have these modern uh, disposals in, in our sinks and that they can just take about anything. Oh, that's not true. What's below those modern garbage disposal are pipes. Yeah, yeah. maybe we should get a little more uh, detailed and unpleasant about this because, you know, when you pour it out of your frying pan, it, it looks like a transparent liquid, but right. I guess when it cools and later on it's down there and it's out of sight, it's become something else. That's right. It cools, it congeals. Well, you've seen it in the can, right? You ever had a, you know, rasher of bacon and, and put the grease in and, you know, a little later it's all congealed. Imagine that in your pipes. And that's the pipes that are supposed to take our wastewater away from our homes to the sewer and out to Deer Island. But, um, you know, it can cause significant problems of, of, of blockage and then subsequently uh, sewer overflows. So we're just reminding folks, you know, can it, cool it, trash it, you know, can the grease. And in fact, if folks would like one of these uh, grease lids, uh, there's a number of ways they can get it. Our website, www.bwsc.org. And we have a phone line, Boston Water and Sewer residents can call. 617-989-7000. And we'd be happy. In fact, I brought a few for you. Believe me, I, I, I don't and, want to be spilling grease in my and, freezer, and so the this crew. is very, very handy. Well, interestingly, I think we all used to remember this. Right. And intuitively, I think everyone remembers, uh, oh yeah, that shouldn't go down the drain. Uh, well, speaking of things going on the drain, uh, and because it's fall, we're going to have a lot of leaves in the streets, and you know, most of us think, well, that's not my, my problem, it's not my responsibility, but I guess if you have a bunch of those leaves in the mouth of a, uh, of a storm drain, I guess that, that could be an issue. Right. Well, I guess our theme today could be, you know, let's watch out what we put into our system so our system, you know, works right. Uh, storm water goes into the storm drains. Uh, first of all, we don't want any backup of flooding in the you know, local neighborhood. So, you know, if folks can remember just to keep the leaves and debris away, just remember the storm drain is not a trash receptacle. It seems to be a theme here today. Let's watch what we put down there. Um, we ask people in the surrounding area. A big problem uh, with our storm water is uh, folks who don't pick up after their dogs. And again, we have another campaign called Scoop the Poop. Uh, remember, our wastewater goes to Deer Island, where it's treated. Our storm water goes into the storm drains and into our waterways, untreated. So we want that to be as, as clean and as, you know, uh, uh, untainted as possible. So we just ask folks to remember that. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Chris. It was a pleasure. Stephen Maloney from the Boston Water and Sewer Commission. Up ahead, school sports with Pat Flaherty.